Cow prints are hot, but wait. Greg's doing the crazy cow free edge. The little razzmatazz <laughs> right now. When I'm teaching nails every day, I love to focus on the fundamentals of great form and shape. I'm not only going to show you how to create a nail with great form and shape, I'm gonna show you how to decorate its smile line with a really cool cow print design. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the surface of the nail so the enhancement doesn't lift. And what you wanna be able to do is use your electric file with a medium arbor band. And we're gonna run our electric file at 3000 RPMs. I wanna be able to lightly tickle away the shine from the surface. Notice how I'm removing it in a diagonal fashion. So I'm working from here to here. I lightly tickle around the surface and feather away the shine in a feathering motion. I'm not digging, I'm lightly feathering it from the surface. Once we've done that, we're gonna take swipe. And this is how we're going to dehydrate the surface of the nail. But this is not only gonna dehydrate the surface of the nail, what this is gonna do, it's gonna remove all the oils and contaminants from the surface, prepare it for protein bond application. All right, we're gonna use some liquid gold. That's what I call protein bond. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to apply a nice even coat from cuticle to free edge. You're going to do this on all 10 nails. As soon as you're done, you're going to come back with one more coat. And this is now ready to rock and roll. So as a beginner or somebody who's learning to do nails, my suggestion to you is to learn how to build a nail in one color. Don't worry about the design inside the nail. We're gonna show you how to put the design on top. If you can master building the nail in one color, it's going to be easier for fills. It's going to be easier for you to lay your artwork on the surface. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to build something with a nice almond shape. We're going to take my form, we're going to place the tab underneath. I'm going to pre-pinch all the way I'm gonna open up my form. Notice how I hold the tabs right here. And what we wanna be able to do is get it on. So you can see how it's angling down. What I wanna be able to do is use my hand, right here, my middle finger on my right hand, and I'm gonna lift it up. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually bring the form up so you can see how straight the form is from the side. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with cover pink. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna submerse my brush and then I'm going to bounce, bounce, bounce. I'm doing a three count. Notice that I'm gonna actually take my brush and I'm gonna remove the excess from the base. What this is going to do, it's going to give me a consistency that's going to be stable. It's not going to run. From this point, I'm going to take the body of my brush and I'm going to walk it from the top. Notice how easy it is for me to walk it up to the corner. Now what I can do with the excess is I could bring it back in and then use again the body of the brush to bring it all the way to the side. Whatever excess is hanging out down at the bottom, I'm going to use the body to mold it into a really, really nice pointed shape. I can use the brush to stretch it and I could use the side of the brush just to bring it back in. Again, as least of a ledge as possible right at the nail. We wanna to try to get a nail as flush to the natural nail as we possibly can. Once we have built out the free edge, we're now going to focus on starting at the cuticle area and building the body from top to bottom. So I need a pearl that is going to run, but not away from me, I need it to run for me, All right? What does that mean? I need to be able to control gravity. I don't want to use my brush and have to brush it so that it actually smears all over the place. I wanna be able to set it down and then use the tip of my brush to tap around the cuticle area so that it self levels around the perimeter with the least amount of effort. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna submerse my brush. I'm gonna get quite a bit of liquid. I'm gonna lightly tap that off. I'm gonna bounce, 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 bounce. Two, three, four, five. Boom, I'm gonna use the tip of my brush. I'm going to walk around the perimeter of the nail. Notice as I walk around the perimeter of the nail, everything starts to run down towards the tip. 
Once it gets past this point, I use the tip of the brush and start to brush it forward. Now, all I am doing at this point is using the body to keep most of the thickness up towards the stress area. I don't wanna brush it too far forward. I have to make sure that I'm balancing, but you can see around the perimeter of the nail how tight we can get it, especially around the edges. All I have to do is lightly brush it forward. Then as it starts to set, I could start to bring it down towards the tip of the nail. I don't wanna brush it all the way. I wanna try to keep a lot of the balance through the upper arch. Okay. Once we have actually got this into the perfect position, we're going to get one more bead. Again, bounce, 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 maybe a three count. This time, I'm going to take my brush backwards. I'm going to set it right here. Notice how I feather it into the body flush. With all of the product running down, all I have to do is guide it. But notice that I'm not just pulling it down, I'm using the side of the brush as I bring it forward. Then the closer I get to the tip, it's almost like the very, very base of my brush is working it down towards the tip to make sure that I secure it. You notice that I could actually take my brush and lightly brush it back to make it as even as I possibly can. But what I'm trying to do at this point is use the body of the brush just to kind of make all of the acrylic even across the tip of the nail. So one of the things I want to be able to do is before it dries, I just want to have enough flexibility in the tip to go ahead and pinch in a really, really nice C curve. All right, that is done. Okay, once the C curve is pinched in, then what I can do is I'm just gonna wait a few more seconds. And this is going to allow me to come in and remove the form from the surface of the nail. All right, so as soon as the nail dries, what I wanna be able to do is take a new file and take my edges off. This is really, really important because if you don't wanna cut your clients, you have to take the edges off your file down so that you don't slice them. All right, so what we're gonna end up doing again is we're gonna to try to create kind of an almanetto style of shape. And what I wanna be able to do is as I come down, notice how I swivel my file down towards the tip, right? Trying to make it as even as I can from this point, but you notice how I actually hold my hand file. I don't hold it from the top like this. I make sure that I grip it. Once I have those sides even, I'm gonna turn the hand to the side. You can see how I'm actually holding it at the lowest point of where the lower arch starts. I wanna be able to file up and I continue to file until my hand file reaches the side. And what this is going to do is it's going to build a really, really straight lower arch. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna file the upper arch and the rest of the body into form and then we're gonna get ready to paint in our design. I'm running my electric file around uh, 11,000 RPMs. Uh, notice the zones, zone one, zone two, zone three. So again, zone one, zone two. Then as I start to get down to the very, very front, I'm using zone three of my barrel to shape my upper arch. Okay, so notice here how I'm actually coming down the barrel of the nail, using zone three on this side, zone two, and then zone one. So I can make my C curve nice and even from side to side. Last but not least, what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to work around the cuticle area. I'm going to work around zone one, zone one, zone one of my barrel, and then I'm gonna follow through the whole entire nail, zone one, zone two, zone three, all the way down the barrel. And this is how you're going to reduce the bulk from the surface of the enhancement before you file it into perfection. What we want to be able to do now is use our hand file. We're going to do a little bit of perimeter blending so the cuticles are nice and tight. And I want to be able to do the same thing on the opposite side. And then I'm going to hold my hand file, as you can see, from the top like this, this position. And just come down on one side to file it all nice and even. I want to be able to do the same thing on the opposite side, but the only difference is I'm actually making contact going up before I let the file fall. Contact, contact, contact. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to keep the surface of the hand file on that side so that it doesn't slip. Okay. So once I have actually refined the shape, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look down this profile and this is where we're going to make it absolutely perfect in shape. This is I'm looking at the client profile to make sure that we make the tip nice and round. I'm gonna hold my finger, keep my fingers, make a P sign, rest my hand file in between and then let the file rest on the surface so that I could get it nice and even from side to side. All right, so what I'm gonna do is after we're done file finishing, I'm gonna take a little bit of swipe and just kind of clean off the dust from the surface. Now, what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to use protein bond, not just around the edges of the nail, but to prevent the design from actually chipping, I'm just going to, again, I'll run it around the edges just like this, all right? and then just kind of lightly follow through the surface. The protein bond is going to do is it's going to prevent the gel from chipping away from any of the edges or the surface of the nail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Overdrive, which is black. I'm gonna use Mega Jam, which is this really, really hot neon pink. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on a tile and work from a tile. So when I am painting a smile line into a file finish surface, I want to be able to use a few brushes so that I can make this as absolutely flawless as possible. So I'm going to be using a combination between um, a master gel brush, uh, a micro detailer, and also a striper brush that I've actually cut. I'm going to take uh, a little bit of Mega Jam. I'm just going to get a little bit on the end of the brush. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll just set it down right here and, and just kind of work in a, just a kind of like a little bit of a, of a U, right? Where I'm going to actually start my smile line. I don't need a lot, right? Just a little bit right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'll take my brush. I'm going to run it inside just to get a nice healthy amount. And then I'm going to start here and then use the tip of my brush just to kind of work this all the way up into the corner. And you can see how nice I'm actually able to get it to that side. So what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to do the same thing on this side. It's going to be a lot easier if I actually work my brush vertical. There's enough paint that I'm going to be able to chase it all the way up as you can see to the corner, right? Just like this, okay? So once I am done doing that, um, you know, I'm trying to get my smile line as even as I can from side to side. We can always go back and uh, adjust it, but as long as I have that there, then what I can do is take the, the tip of my brush and I'm just lightly kind of following in front and just kind of smearing out the excess to have really, really good coverage. Trying not to get past, I'll go back and, and touch that up. If I need to go back and do a little bit of detail, then what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to clean my brush. What I've done is I've kind of used a little bit of the swipe. Um, and then what I can end up doing is just taking the tip of my brush and just kind of just getting right inside just to lightly clean it up, right? So what I've done is I've taken a little bit of swipe, I've dabbed it, I've kind of cleaned the surface. And then that way, what I'm doing is I can come in with just the very, very tip of my brush while the gel is, is still wet. And I could just lightly come from behind to try to get that as even as I possibly can. So on the opposite side as well, if I need to make any adjustments, even with the tip of your brush, like just touching, you can see how I'm adding that little dot to the very, very tip. Just that small dot is enough to kind of make it a little bit thicker. So again, once I'm done doing that, then what we're going to do is we're going to get it inside the light. And what I like to do is I wanna make sure that it sets really, really well, okay? so. The time it actually takes for you to paint out the rest of them to get that foundation done, it's gonna take you more than a minute. Leave it inside the light as long as it takes you to actually paint out that foundation color, at least a minute. So now what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to fill in the color. So the easiest thing for me to do is to take my gel brush 
and notice that I'm actually just gonna kind of, you know, get the tip uh, really dense with color. I'm just kind of brushing through the color just like this, right, to load it up. And then I wanna be able to keep my brush behind the, the smile line. I, don't, I do not wanna go past it. All I'm trying to do is fill that color in. Again, touch, touch the surface. And then again, what I wanna be able to do is stay behind the smile line. If you're uncomfortable using this brush, you could always take a small, right, liner right, or your micro detailer and come in and just kind of detail the edges as you can see, whatever is going to make you more comfortable. Personally, what I like to do is just touch the edge and then I'm using this just to fill in all of the shadows of that free edge. I'm going all the way around the edges to make sure that it's fully coated and as you can see look how awesome that smile line is going to look like we're going to get this inside the light go ahead and again finish out the rest of your nails and then as soon as you're done filling in all of those shallow spots the nail is going to be ready to finish off the design i'm going to show you guys a really really cool trick i'm going to take a little bit of base gel and we're just going to take right a nice clear gel i'm going to choose base and this is the way that you're going to be able to clean your brush so that you don't have to use solvents which can actually fray them and make them like actually split. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it inside the clear gel and you can see how the paint is actually pulling out of the brush. This is a great way for you to keep your brushes nice and tight. This is also a great way for you to actually clean them and pull that color out from that really, really small surface area. So now what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to paint in um, just random spots. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch the surface here and then I'm just going to kind of lay again a nice spot. And then what I want to be able to do is just, just kind of randomly work it. I, I don't want to go past my smile line. So I got to be really, really careful that I'm just right up to that edge. And then again, I'm just going to get, just blot it and then just come right through and, and just kind of work it out. Now, once I kind of have my lines, I'm gonna go back to my gel brush and then just kind of fill in, all right, just randomly fill in that space, all right, with the color. Boom. I don't want to make it too thick, but what I'll do is I'll use the tip of my brush right, to kind of fill that in. All right, and then what I can end, end up doing with this is once I actually have it on, I can kind of just make the, the sides a little bit kind of random, random, right? Just go along the edges as random as we possibly can. So I'm just gonna take a, a, a smaller amount. I'm just gonna kind of set this down and then just work out a really, really small blotch and then make it a little bit heavier down towards the edge. And then just maybe just come in and just kind of fill in that area with just kind of random lines and spots. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just again, setting just blotches down, random spots all the way down and through. Maybe just a couple of dots there. And then on the opposite side, what we wanna be able to do is, again, all I'm trying to do is, 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 is fill in space, right? Don't want to overwhelm the whole design because I want to be able to show off the pretty pink. All I'm just doing is laying in dots. Here we go. All right, so once we actually have the pattern actually laid out, and then what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna get this inside the light as long as it takes you to actually paint out the pattern on the other hand. Okay, so after we're done, uh, I wanna talk about the top coat application because sometimes as you can see, uh, if the free edge is painted too thick, the paint can actually be slightly raised higher than the surface of the natural nail. So there's a thing that you can do that's actually going to cover that up. I'm gonna show you guys how to be able to do that. I'm gonna use finished gel. Finished gel has a nice viscosity to it. 
But what I wanna be able to do with that first coat is I just wanna go ahead and just kind of paint over the whole entire design, right? And then what I'm gonna do after I'm done painting all the designs out, I'm just gonna take a little bit more and I'm just going to run a really, really slight, very, very light amount behind the smile line. And what that is going to do is it's basically just gonna kind of fill in that gap, right? Perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get this inside the light. Again, I'm gonna do this on all of the fingers and we're gonna do it to the opposite hand. Okay, so what I wanna be able to do so it's absolutely perfect is I'm just going to take a 180 buffer, right? I need to make sure that I don't take away the design, but I wanna make sure that the whole entire surface is gonna be nice and smooth. I'm gonna come back with one more coat of protein bond around the edge of the nail, just around the edge. And let's go ahead and hit it with one more coat of finish. This is going to seal it. It's going to take away any type of ledges. It's going to make it absolutely flawless. Let's go inside the light and cure it for a final 60 seconds. Hey guys, what's going on? We hope you love our videos. Let us know in the comments below what you wanna see next. To see more, head over here. To subscribe to our channel, head over here.